What's going on, everybody? Welcome for the first time we're back to another Is God For It Gets Me video. My face may be very familiar, as you may know me from my DLJ Works channel, where I talk a lot about technology, uh, helping people build websites and video platforms and all these other things. But this right here is where I have a true heart for ever since that I came into the fold, ever since that I've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in my life um, about a decade ago. And I'm actually need to get into that story in terms of how I got saved and why I got saved for the terminology that you may understand. So I may not make this sound spooky, but in, in this one, I, I tend to relax because like I said, I have a heart. The Lord is giving me a heart for the word and everything else and talking about the way things are today and from a scriptural standpoint. Now, what you see on my screen here, I'm on a website and I have to really be careful. The reason that you really don't see me post as much on this channel is because I have to really be careful in terms of what I post. You know, I just can't just feed the algorithm and everything else. Uh, I have to give it to I have to give it to you in a way that the Lord makes me see it. It allows me to connect the dots and, and, and orchestrate it to be able to write it out. And usually if I can write it down and kind of see how things are and be able to explain it to you to where. You'll be able to understand it. You actually may actually catch me saying less ums in this video and less hesitation because there's more there's more confidence with this. You know, there's more confidence with this. But with that being said, though. You really have to be careful when you're looking at things such as Illuminati cards and everything else. For me, I have the. I have the biblical backing out the, the the Holy Ghost backing right now, because in 2012, I went down a rabbit hole where I, that's all I was looking at. I was just looking at all of this, this stuff. And it's very cancerous when you're just going down this rabbit hole and you start to see the world in a very dark and negative place, because then you start to see this stuff. and You look at what's going on, on the outside and it's like. Oh man, all this is really happening. These these cars may not just be some silly card game right now. Maybe there's just some something crazy about all this. And I got into all that deep research and it was just a very dark place and I had to stay away from it and just get back to the word and understanding things from a biblical perspective and understanding that I live in a different reality, a different realm um than most people. And they could live in the same realm too. They just don't believe. There's a book that I'm getting by Daniel Duvall uh, called Higher Dimensions, Parallel Dimensions, and I can't remember the second title to that, but we're, in that book, he's going to talk about and break down a lot about the spiritual realms and other dimensions in a way that these com in the way that comic books, in the way that Marvel, in the way that everything else talks about these, the multiverse, and I think this is a good time to actually talk about this, but I've been really wanting to talk about this for a long time. This card right here, the more that I see in terms of movies, if you look at movies, we're now getting into things like the metaverse, the multiverse, all these things about other dimensions, outside dimensions are becoming more prevalent. And you have to ask the question why, you know, I think the most dangerous thing that we can actually do right now is to just reduce things to it's just statements. Oh, it's, it's just a movie. Oh, it's just fiction. Oh, it's just your imagination. These people have creative imaginations. Oh, it's just a work of great, great art. Oh, it's just this. Oh, it's just that. It's just, it's just, it's just. That's that ostrich bury your head in the sand because you don't want your reality shaken by what the actual truth may be. And I may be characterized as some tin foil hat Christian. That's completely fine. I know in a way that the way that things are going right now, the way that things are being talked about, the weirdness, we can just take with the whole men being acting like women and women acting like men that's that's something that's being celebrated that that's something that's being normalized that's out of order in terms of how god orchestrated things and to just reduce the bible to some old book it's, it's a living book that book proves itself every single day that we have these events happening and i'm, I'm actually show you some scriptures anyway with this but let's look at interesting times out of all the cards that exist, and this is on the website, Maya Magic. I, I, before you even go to this website, I'll leave the link. But I implore you, before you go, and you go down this rabbit hole, because these cards, they're going to capture your attention. The, the drawings, the illustrations are creepy on their own, but they will capture your attention and make you just freak out. So my advice to you is, is to not look at them if you don't want your reality. If you don't want to take this red pill and you don't want your reality shaken in a way that you would actually think all right 
If you don't want it to, if you don't want your reality shaken, these cards are from the 1995 edition. All right, they actually have an Illuminati card game, believe it or not, on Walmart. I accidentally was like looking up the Illuminati card game to look at some Wikipedia information from Steve Jackson. And I kind of my surprise, this popped up. So uh, I'm not. This is not to encourage you to get these cards. This is my Christian employment to just employment to to encourage you to pray about this, to have some sort of godly some some christ-like support before you indulge in this information i don't look at this information too often because it's so it's so creepy all right the plans these aren't prophetic things these are just plans so the, you have to remember lucifer's greatest endeavor is to be like god and god has prophets so the devil's going to copy that and he's going to have prophets God does nothing. I think, believe this was in the book of Amos. I don't know how the scripture pulled up, but God does nothing without his prophets knowing about it first. So when you have things such as on the internet, people talking about predictive programming and, and all these other things in terms of helping people to understand, like, look, uh, there was a G, I'll give you an example. There was a GI Joe cartoon clip that I actually have on my phone um, where there was something about them looking through a little scope and they had to get their infrared sensors in terms of some sort of like cash or credit system. <coughs> Excuse me. At the end of the video, at the end of that cartoon clip, they tried to pay with cash money. And then the guy ran outside and said, hey, this is play. This, this is no good. Here. This money is no good any longer because they already had some sort of different um, currency exchange. And that was through some sort of like retina technology and every it was it was very creepy to say the least, but very true. And one of the things that um, having a Bible, having this biblical understanding, it gives me peace and it gives me hope, you know, to accept these truths about what's going on. Because believe it or not, there are people that believe in, you know, they believe in Lucifer. They believe in that he's he's the good guy and God is the bad guy. And I think we see that more and more in our culture. But let's get right into it. Why? Why is it out of all these cards you see here? Forget about everything else that we're scrolling through here. Why did I pick out the most interest, interesting times? Um, I actually believe this is probably the most concerning card because I think we're going to see things upon the earth that we have never ever witnessed in the history of mankind. Now, the first account of some weirdness actually comes from Genesis 6. I would actually encourage you, if you want to look at this from a very cosmic perspective, you want to look at this from a, a film or movie perspective, you want to get your, your Prometheus on, you want to get your your in your insurrection on i probably use that in wrong context and everything goes take a look start with genesis 6 all right if, if you don't care anything about jesus christ right now or you think he's just some lame or whatever else I, I i would i would actually argue against that and have you to think again he's just some carpenter that just roamed around in some loose clothes he had no power he's just some pansy or whatnot that's what the culture has sold you you believe it fine but if you want to have a very interesting perspective and you want God to really grasp your attention, work from Genesis 6. I would encourage you. Allow the spirit to, to lead you. Allow God to actually lead you where he wants you to. So this isn't thus saith the Lord. This is just Deshaun's suggestion. If it's in your mind that the Bible is corny, it's an old book, but you need something interesting to read, start with Genesis 6. Because Genesis 6 actually talks about the fall of, the angels leaving their first estate and coming down and having sex with human women. And when that happened, you had all these, these giants upon the earth. And it says, and there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came and the daughters of man, and they bare children to them and the same came mighty men of old, which was men of renown. Now, when we take that scripture in terms of the things that were on the earth, what did other cultures such as when we have a, a epic like Gilgamesh, when they told that epic, was was there some sort of like giant nephilim, all right, uh, a result of a the sexual the sexual intimacy between an angel and a human woman, and you had these giants running around here, these these like lizards from Spider Man, wherever you want to call them, these things that shouldn't have been here. And when other people saw them, they saw them as gods because these entities had abilities and, and powers that no other mere mortal had on this planet. So 
when people saw them that they just make you know epics about them just like we see in movies when you have uh these these tales these hieroglyphics that's on the wall these these drawings and everything in final fantasy 7 the ancients when you had when the sephiroth and them went into the black temple and everything else and they needed the black material and they had all those ancient drawings to explain what was on the earth before them so was gilgamesh an epic i'm just using gilgamesh as an example um beowulf all those all those things all those t tall tales and stories paul bunyan all of them were those just tales to kind of a human way to explain what those humans at the time were witnessing on earth all right or could have been something else i don't know <coughs> y'all excuse me i have a little coughing cold here but anyway this was the first weird event that was to happen and where weird things was actually being up on the earth now I use this scripture as your first backdrop into this because um, over time, over the years, if you look in the Bible, you read Ezekiel or you read other accounts, Lucifer has always tried the same thing over and over and over again. All right. Trying to have some sort of antichrist figure. God shut him down. All right. From even from Nimrod. That's in Genesis 11. Um, in the book of Ezekiel, the um, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the king wrong or whatnot, but I have to go back to Ezekiel. Um, but all these occurrences, and there's going to be one final antichrist, but there's always some weird. The, the Lucifer is always trying to bring the second heaven in, down into this first heaven. It's trying to rip through that those dimensions and find some way to bring in these other entities, which is why for a lot of people, the things like the metaverse and everything else scares them and everything because they don't know what's to come through this technology right now. And it may be getting a little bit extreme, but we don't know. All this is new. We, we, we really don't know. So it says here, let me read this card. Things are getting so weird that not even the secret masters are sure what's going on. Unfortunately, this makes them grumpy and they tend to argue a lot, slam doors and destroy small nations. All right. So there could be something going on in the background right now. You may be, th I'm, as I'm doing this review, you may be sitting up here looking at me like it's, it's just a card game. There's, there's nothing to worry about. I, I, it was it was it just a card game when the CIA, I believe, or FBI, whoever raided Steve Jackson's office and had to confiscate these cards at the time because I guess this was information that shouldn't have been released. I don't know, but if you look at the picture, you have this guy here with a question mark, a Riddler like red question mark on his chest, and you have this alien, this giant praying mantis. You have all these things here, all right. Now, if you think about today, you think about just the, just on a very surface level, when we talk about all the things that's out of order right now with that, I, I use the men becoming women and women becoming men uh, narrative in terms of that happening. That's the first level of weirdness that's actually going on and being normalized. So as that actually is normalized then we have to go through all the everything else where, you know, I actually believe that things like bestiality um pedophilia all that stuff has to be normalized because you just open i can't see how you can actually say that oh you know i like if i'm a guy and i like guys then you know i want to have sex with other guys then you know that that nobody has specified an age group in that and uh, they're going to be men who like oh i just i like other guys too they just have to be a little bit younger so how do you not did you see the hypocrisy in that that it makes no sense whatsoever it's also just like you know with with the the womanism i don't know if i can say the f word right now but so i'm gonna say the womanist all right if i was to if i was a guy and i put on I always think about this skit if i put on a wig you know a woman is looking at me and like you know oh you're a toxic masculine guy and i just put on a wig easily and then they're looking at me like oh you're brave and stunning you want to be just like us take the wig off oh you're you're a toxic man oh or you're you're you have no business being just like this right now. Oh, you're you're a crazy guy. Put the wig back on. Oh, oh, you're you're stunning and brave. You're very sensitive. You see how crazy this sounds right now? I always think about doing a skit like that to show the foolishness of things like the womanist movement, but and the ideologies that's being pushed here on the internet. But it's just it's crazy when we think about that. Um, when you play this card, this card may either have uh, one or two effects. The person who plays it must choose one and declare it when the card is played. A, no goal is valid except the basic goal, number of groups controlled, Illuminati goals, and goals from the goal cards cannot be used to win, all right? The number of groups required for the basic goal is increased by two. This card replaces any blue 
NWO card in place. So I'm not familiar with all the logistics in terms of how you play the actual game, but when it has the little italics information caption underneath, that's something to really pay attention to. It's comical, but it's something to really pay attention to. You really want to analyze the illustration. Here you have frogs falling from the sky, right? Is this something that's going to be, is this a symbolic or representation of something that's going to be manufactured? Uh, you have the alien tentacles here in the back with the weirdness here, uh, volcanoes erupting. There's this push for all for, to invert God's natural order of things. And when you're inverting that and you, you really don't know what you're doing, which we're showing that we don't know what we're doing. We claim that we do and we have science on our side. But in the end, we're going to like we're having right now, like we're having all this infighting about the um, the thing. I don't want to even say it right now. The thing and, and the way of healing it and the constant boosting of that healing. We're having all these things being pushed and it just seems so silly right now. This is all being manufactured. So it seems most people won't believe that. They just like to believe whatever larger entities tell them. But, you know, I digress. I, but I've been thinking about this card so much because things are things from now until... 2030 i think <coughs> excuse me i think things are going to get so weird we're already talking about the metaverse things are going to get so weird right now we can't put a a lid well not a lid but we can't really identify and predict how things are going to be or going to look by the end of the decade we were just not like this is probably going to be one of the weirdest decades that we're going to have and, and mark my words if this video is still up for somebody to refer back to in maybe like five more years like oh that guy was right like, we never thought it was gonna get this weird or traumatic right now you heard it here first at least the other scripture that i actually want to go to okay uh where am i all right now uh, i don't want to get into that scripture yet so that's genesis 6 here now, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after the things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Now, there's more to go into this scripture because in the end of days, we're going to see the power of Christ and Christ empowered Christians, his elect group of people, people who have been chosen, who have been called and chosen, be empowered in a way that we never have seen before. But we're also going to see things on earth that. And uh, we, we, we just it's still, imagine if you've seen an actual golem or something crazy just walking down the street. You see something from Final Fantasy, a giant bird or, or something else just stupidly dumb that you've never, ever seen before in your life. But except in movies, but now it's just walking across your street. It's going to start looking like uh, it wasn't Total Recall, Men in Black or something like that. Imagine if you had that, you know, just walking <laughs> on the street and it was just normal at first your heart's gonna be like w w what's going on here what what is what is happening right now at this moment and you just it's just gonna be so weird until one day it's gonna be normalized uh that movie bright with will smith um uh, walking around and then working with you know these these orcs or whatever the case may be and you your argument may still be that's a work of fiction okay fine but i am showing you right now from a secular standpoint with this illuminati card and a biblical standpoint, which I believe the Bible is complete objective truth. All right. There is no your truth with the Bible. It's just complete objective truth. Then you take the two comparisons. You ask yourself the question. If there's a if there's a, a gamut of these movies being released. All right. Sweet. Um, Sweet Tooth. I think that's the name of it on Netflix where you have the boy being born as a deer. These hybridizations. You know, there's a reason that these narratives now are being like kind of push forward even more even with the release as much of a marvel head as i am think about all the superhero movies now how popular they are and believe in that we can have certain abilities that no other person can have imagine if what we're taking to heal us from this thing it, it wrecks us to the point to where like oh if you take this thing now you'll be able to get certain abilities and be able to heal yourself in a way that you never have been all right imagine if that was to happen what would you do then because you haven't trusted, you have no spiritual trust, you have no godly trust right now. You just trust in what your the world is actually conditioning you to accept it and explain it to you. You're you're ready to take anything. Especially now, you you've looked at all the superhero movies, you looked at all these 
other cinemas that's pushed this this go beyond humanist transhumanistic transhumanistic narrative you're going to be willing to accept anything and everything because you crave deep down inside those abilities i'm, I'm not gonna kid you like my upbringing and my fascination with superhero movies that's deep rooted inside of me and i have to if it wasn't for christ i'll be the first one on that train to sit up here and join and take certain things like that if it meant for me to go beyond my own humanity, especially growing up and me being kind of weak as a kid and, and not being a fighter, yeah, yeah, I would want to take something that would make me extraordinarily strong and make me go beyond like the, like this puny body. Why who wouldn't want to take that? All right. So what what's coming on the earth? Man's hearts are fell failing them for fear for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for looking after those things, constantly giving their attention to. Things that are being produced by the world because the world is more so their God than anything else. The culture is more so their God. We're in a culture, we're in a time right now where we have relationships are failing. And I'm going to do a study on this too because all between relationships, the dating game, all those things, even though I'm a happily married man, but I have to think about my children. Who are they going to actually have? I, you really have to get supernatural relationships. You have to trust in the Lord and, and having your kids being connected with somebody that's also being raised by him. So your kids are being just like in the days of Noah. All right. Being matched with somebody that's going to that's being raised by God also as well as being raised in godly homes. It may not seem like those homes exist much more anymore, but you have to trust the Lord because you, you're only limited to your two eyes and what's in front of you or your perspective. But the dating game, the way that the culture, how women just allow the culture to just feed into them and, and continue. I call it the Lucifer effect, the book that I'm writing right now, to continue to mold and condition them and, and totally believe in um, and totally believe in everything else. So whatever the culture says, that's what they're going to implement in their lives. Men aren't being raised to do certain things, to, to know what it means to actually be a man if you don't have any tools and there's these expectations on men right now to just be men but i don't want to get into that at this moment i i have to do a whole separate video on that because i at me talking about that i'll be all over the place like i said that's something that i want to compose a study on and have my all my thoughts um on my eyes my t's crossed and my eyes dotted for that so i'm actually have to do a writing report on that so nextly uh, what was the other scripture? Okay, um, let me see here. All right, and except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh to be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Now, when I think about the times that we're in right now, all right, a lot of a lot of pastors, I guess, a lot of ministers, uh, they don't. I don't really see a lot of people. I don't see a lot of people. Not saying that it's not happening, but I don't see a lot of leaders actually talking about the technology and, and, and bringing in the culture in their discussions to actually kind of explain the scriptures. Um, except those days shop should be shortened. Is mankind just forfeiting their humanity? When Lucifer actually does come up on the scene, how easy is it for people to actually like relinquish their, their humanity to gain a piece of what he has as the Antichrist? I don't, I don't know what time frame this is supposed to lie in, but when we look at when we talk about automation, we talk about artificial intelligence, the, the singularity as um, uh, who's the guy for Google, uh, Ray Kurzweil of Google. I actually have one of his books up there on my shelf and everything. So um, and what what's the book? The Age of Spiritual Machines. That's the book that I have on my shelf. I have it right over there. I'm not going to get up and get it, but I do have one of his books and I have to look into that and everything else. But um but you have all these talks about man merging with machines, um, bioengineering, um, genetic hacking, CRISPR technology. You know, well, what are we forfeiting our humanity to actually become right now? People are willing to just zonk out of this reality to go into the metaverse and have the time of their lives and be able to escape what God has already designed instead of just making this better instead of. And I'm not going to even say us making it better, but instead of looking to Jesus Christ, you know, the author and finisher of this race, instead of looking to him to see how we can actually change ourselves morally and on other levels, because I wouldn't be in a position now, man, if it wasn't for him, actually. And I do still have my 
sinful affinities, all right, that I have, like, that's been hard flesh-wise for me to relinquish those things, and I know they keep me stuck to a certain extent, but I am fully aware of them. And it's just allowing the Lord to be able to work in me to be able to have those things really worked out, all right? And without getting too personal here in this, this little video that I'm recording and, and relinquishing a lot to you, just know that when I talk about this, I'm in the same boat with everybody else. I'm, there's nothing special about me except that I look to the Lord for all of the things that, well, I'll be lying if I say all, okay? That's the part that I, I have to work on. That's, that is the part that I have to, I'm not going to even say work on. That's the part I have to actually like give up. I have to allow myself to give up on those sinful things that I think are necessary in my life, but they're really not. They're just thorns and they're just keeping me, keeping sin plugged in and blocking me from hitting my full potential. All right. So it, it is one of those things that you have to allow the Lord. You have to let him have his way. And the, the sacrifice and the forfeiture is, is not an easy thing right now. So I'm here to tell you from a personal experience, there's nothing special about me. I'm just I just work here right now. I'm just as the Lord gives it to me and be able to talk about. I just work here and I'm just trying to share this information with you. And to make connections in a way that you understand, especially if you're a, if you're on my side, you're of the geek culture, the gaming world. You come from that and everything else. I use terms to try to help better help you understand this is real. This, this isn't a game. This is this is real. Yeah, you can use the games and ask questions. Where did they get that idea from? Where, where, did, where did all that come from? The the flight, the, you know, going into other dimensions. Where did all that come from? There's another scripture, too, about. Uh, I don't have the scriptures pulled up, but when you talk about Enoch, Enoch didn't die, die. He was taken by God. He didn't see death at all. He didn't see death at all. He he was trans. Um, uh, what's the word? It starts with a T, but somebody um, leave a comment below in terms of what that means. Transliteration, I think is what it's called. All right. He was transitioned to be with the Lord. Um, there was there are some instances of some teleportation that happened in the Bible. Where there was a eunuch, and I could be wrong, maybe it wasn't a eunuch, but I'm not sure, an Ethiopian or something like that, where he got baptized and the person that helped him get baptized just disappeared. I think that's in the book of Acts. So if you want to research that and take my words and put them as keywords in Google to try to see where that scripture is, be my guest. But you'll also see what I'm talking about with that. So there's some things like this that occur in the Bible that's on these these parallel dimensions where we we can't see it with our own eyes, but there exists another realm beyond our own. And it, in the Bible is called the first, second and third heaven. It's identified in those types. But this isn't the video where I'm going in depth on that. But I wanted to go into this card game, you know, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be short. Now, if it wasn't for the Lord's spirit being on this earth and those who chose to follow him. All right. Who are called and chose to follow him. He, the Lord is doing this out of love for his own children. Now, you may say we're all God's children. I, I like to disagree with you on that. We're all God's creation, but we're not all his children. And there's scripture that actually says, you know. Um, well, well, David in the book of Psalms, actually, you know, I was born in sin um, and shaping in iniquity. And in my womb, did my mother conceive me? In the womb, I was shaping in iniquity. And I'm, I'm right now I'm paraphrasing that scripture, but he, he makes it very plain and clear of his own mortality. That he comes, we come in in a sinful state. We're born childs of, of Lucifer. We're born immediately as devilish people. We're not born to just immediately do good, which is why when we see something dumb, we pull out our phones and we record it. We're not, our first affinity is to not, inkling is to not sit up here and do the right thing. All right. Unless we've actually had a spiritual change or something we've been taught or whatever the case may be. Um, there's no one that's good here on this earth. Not one. Even the Lord Jesus said, except the father in heaven, when Jesus was actually walking, when God was actually walking in the flesh as his son, Jesus, you know, he even said that there's no one good. So we can miss me with that whole I'm a good person type stuff. We can miss me with that. You may have intentions at times to where you want to do good but evil is always present and that's our first natural thing our first nature is evil all right which is why we have to have an internal spiritual change the last thing i actually want to talk about 
in regards to that because you may be asking, well, you know, when I said I was saved, what am I, what are we saved from? Okay. And this is a scripture. This is in Romans 5, 9, Romans chapter 5, verse 9. Much more than now being, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. What wrath? Whose wrath? All right. In other versions, we see that as, um, we see that as, look, in the English Standard Version, since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. That is whose wrath we're going to be saved from. We're not being saved from the devil. We're, 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 we're not being saved from the devil. All right. You're, you're still have an affinity to, you still have a, a nature to do evil. But when you come into the fold, when you come and accept the, the blessing of the Lord, the blood of Christ over your life, you're, you're, you do undergo a, you do undergo a transformation, an internal spiritual transformation. When I got, when I accepted the Lord back in October of 2010, I, I went to bed, I was reading uh, some pamphlet um, about, you know, it's one of those typical pamphlets too, brochures that actually said that, you know, the sinner's prayer or something along those lines. But I actually, be I sincerely believed because there were some events in my life that led up to that point. And when I woke up the next morning, I went to bed, you know, thinking one way, but then I woke up and it was like, I, I saw the world on fire. I went to bed thinking that this world was good, but then the next day I saw the world on fire. Like something, like it, I could, I can't even remember the feeling on this day. It was, it wasn't this typical emotional feeling. It was an inward, like you could, you could notice that there was a change. Like something had, I don't want to use the word possession. I'm, I, I try to use words to help you to understand the the context of it, and. I guess if you want to think about somebody, some in some horror movie, something possessing you like that, nothing was possessing me, but to understand it on a very spiritual level, I don't even want to use, I don't even like using the word spiritual anymore. That word has been so abused on a more supernatural. I prefer that one on a supernatural level. There was a change that happened. I can't explain it to you. Um, I had a friend that used to come visit me when I lived in Austin and I knew what his life was like before. And then when he got actual say, there was a huge difference in him, but my brain could not comprehend what that actual difference is. Despite all my education and intelligence, I just could not comprehend it in the Bible. Then I saw it in the Bible. Um, man can't understand the natural man can't understand the supernatural things of God. And I was like, that, that explains it. That, that explains it. That's why I couldn't understand it. And it was so true. So, um, you may sit up here and you may go through your mind and just think, why, why would God have wrath on us? Why, why would God, why, why would he have wrath and everything else? Like, I mean, if you think of it from a comic level and you have a creation that you created and it starts to revert on you in a way that you intended for that creation to behave and act, you know, um, I mean, if you think about, I don't want to, uh, the best way I can actually simplify it is if I sat up here and I drew this image on this, this little box right here and I created this box and everything else. And then a box had a life of its own and it decided to become orange. And, um, instead of containing, you know, the USB thing, it was starting to do things I wasn't expecting it to do. I would have to destroy it because it's not, it is not doing what I actually intended for the box to actually do. This is like, this has turned out pretty bad. And we all create things where we didn't think it was going to turn out in the way we actually thought. So we have to just ball it up, toss it, and, and start over, you know, and start with a new creation. Um, thankfully, the Lord loved us so much that he gave us his only begotten son to not do that. So I really hope that you have an understanding in terms of what all that is. But this is a very I wanted to really do this video. I needed to get this out. And there's still more research, more connecting the dots that I actually need to do. There's more scriptures to expose and dive in. But I think that's enough today. Learning part nor in part here a little there a little i think that's what it said in isaiah so interesting times all right you don't believe the bible maybe you do need to start with the illuminati card game I, I hope that's not the case at all i hope you would start with the word of the lord so he could touch your heart in a way that i i totally cannot touch it but 
if you want to know about some of the weirdness, you look around the world, you're wondering, like, what's going on here? Something just doesn't seem right. Maybe look at these cards and take them seriously, but not to the point to where it just colds your life. Because I, I'm telling you from experience, it can. But just look at this and just ask questions. Look around you and then go to the word and try to get those answers. And I guarantee you, you're going to get them. That's going to be it for this video. Leave a comment below. Thank you guys for watching and listening to me go on about this. Uh, I'm grateful and blessed that I was able to talk about this in the way that I was allowed to right now. So thank you guys again. Thank the Lord for this. I'll talk to you all in the next video. God bless you all.